uh, Excellent. Hey, Dara, thank you so much for chatting with me. And although it's a kind of an informal conversation, um, I'm really interested to hear from you just because your culture is not well known in many parts of the world, and yet everybody hears about your culture. And so there's this natural interest to know more what is you know, uh, what is it about the Kurdish that's so exciting and interesting and, and, and w want to find out more about their culture. So, let me ask you first where you grew up. Tell me about, about yourself. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, I was born in Mahabad, which is a Turkish part of Iran. And I grew up in the same city, in Mahabad. Then I got my bachelor in the Department of Arabic in Kermanshah, which is the something like the Nest Iran. And they speak another reality in Kurdish, which is important for religion studies, for Aladib, for what we call it Yarasani or Kake. I was so lucky, so we had a small talk with it before, so yeah. I was lucky, yeah. So I can speak that one also very well. And then uh, I continued my study in uh, Tehran, in the Department of Comparative Literature, mostly Persian and Arabic. And then get, I get uh, two scholarships from Jordan and also from Damascus University. I just accepted uh, Damascus University because I had this, you know, this negative curse also with North uh, Syria. Mm -hmm. And so also I had the opportunity to teach Persian in the Department of uh, Persian, which we had in Damascus University. After that, so after I got my PhD in 2011, I um, accepted a position, a position in Mardin Artuklu University in the south of uh, Turkey. So we established with our colleagues first department, you know, there is a pro peace process between Kurds and also Turks. It started something in, you know, 2007 or 2000, a little bit before you. So we started first department uh, for Kurdish studies. I was founder for Sarani Kurdish. That department, I was also uh, assistant professor in the department of NELC near Eastern languages and cultures. And then um, uh, I got an invitation from Indiana University, so I came here like visiting assistant professor or like visiting scholars. So I right now I do a lot in Kurdish studies for Indiana University. Mm -hmm. It's for the first time, like, you know, like pilot program from mm -hmm. the very beginning mm -hmm. with all those, you know, standards we have mm -hmm. in, you know, ICTFL. So almost and then, I mean, the first part of the book, but I'm sure there is a lot of other works. Yeah, to yeah. So let's ask a bit to understand. Now, I'm going to ask questions that to you might seem dumb in a way, but for people that are not familiar with uh, the Kurdish people, you know, they have no frame of reference to understand uh, um, you know much about the culture and the language and the people. So linguistically, um, Kurdish, you mentioned, is close close to Persian. Is that right? Yes. But well, not very close, but somewhat related. Or something. Yes, absolutely. So actually, so it's different from you, you know. So we have this dialect of Kermansha, which they use Kurdish vocabulary mostly, the Persian the Persian grammar. Mm. So that's the one of those things we should pay attention. But otherwise, for Sorani Kurdish and also Kurmanjin, absolutely they are different, you know, different. Okay, so you mentioned two types of Kurdish. Kurmanji? There is more than two types. There is, you know, basically we, uh, we classified it like North version of Kurdish, Middle and South. Okay. So we call it Kurmanji, Sorani. And sometimes we call it also Gorani or Horamani and also Kermansha, it depends on which, which dialect that you call it. And also we had a Zazaki. And it's also dependent to, you know, the, it has been also in the, in the history, according to so many sources, that Lord also belonged to Kurdish, you know, people. But almost, I think so right now, so a lot of Lord, they say we have also specific, you know. So I'm not familiar with that group. There is a lot of, I mean, there is a lot of small groups between Kurdish societies also. It is according to a lot of people. So some people, they, I mean, they, uh, they say, for example, Lords also belong to Kurds, or at least, like, for example, we have a very famous book, the Shah Nama. So it's written that Lord or Lord Islam is also belong to Kurdish. But mainly, I mean, right now, academically, so we have a deep three version of Kurdish. Three version. 
Yeah, but mostly Kormanji and Soran is really popular and academic and became, you know, so uh, majority of Kurdish. So, um, how mutually intelligible are um, Kurmanji and Soran? Well, actually, so they are different from grammar. For example, uh, in Kurmanji we have a gender, but in Soran we do not have. Yeah. And so it is a just small thing. In accent and yeah, the meaning pronunciation, also there is a lot of, you know, uh, difference between Sorani and also between Kurmanji. Is one more popular than the other? Well, actually, so Kurds in north of Syria and also in Turkey, they speak um, Kurmanji. But most Kurds in Iran and also in Iraq, they speak Sorani. Sorani written in Arabic or Aramic alphabet, but Kurmanji in Latin. So these things we have to pay attention to. We just, for example, when I came here, we had this plan to uh, write a book for Kurdish. So at the beginning, that was one of these uh, problems. Shall we, in the same time, for the same book start, focus on Kurmanji and also Sorani, like, you know, one book. And later, just the figure out that it will be a better idea to separate between both of them. So we have Sorani Kurdish and also later we can start mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Kurmanji Kurdish. Now physically, um, some, you know, some Asian cultures are short, short um, and some cultures wherever are tall. Um, you know, you get these, uh, yeah, you know, if I use two common things, is there uh, any kind of a trend um, in, in, in Kurdish that you think, yeah, that's, that's a very common in Kurdish, although you have diversity and variety. What are some of the common traits in the Kurdish community? Uh, well, actually, so Kurdish, you know, even Kurdish language and also, I mean, by race, they belong to Indian, uh, Iranian branch of Indian, European. So we share a lot of words with English, for example. A lot of things like tu, do, for example, pedar, ya, ba, Father, Yapa, for example, Ra, brother, for example. There is a lot of things. I know in, in, in Farsi the word bad. Bad means, yeah, bad. M- means bad in English. We, also in Kurdish we use it, also we have other also yeah. uh, vocabulary for it, like Ra, bad, for example. Sometimes in that part of in Iran some people they use bad also, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, Kurds mostly they are, if you want, physical, you know, characters. They mostly white tall, you know, because it's because of the geography of Kurdistan, which you have this kind of hard life and also a lot of mountains, a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, they, so they physically are very strong and tall, you know, and um, I think, yeah, so it's, it's, you can easily recognize between, for example, one Kurd and one Arab, you know, yeah. what I mean. So oh, you so you can tell between yeah, the Kurds? Yeah, absolutely. And okay. even I can say this one is Kurds, that one is Persian, for example. Even this one is Kurds, that one is Turks. But for so when you were in Iran, um, you know, in your younger years, and when you went to Tehran, mm-hmm. could the people in Tehran that you communicated with, other than you speaking, was it, do you think you were identifiable visually as a Kurd? Yes, absolutely. That's a good question. Kurds in Iran, they have sometimes certain, for example, they have a small, I mean, it's not a problem, but so it's, it's when they pronounce it Jim, for example, they, they know that should be, for example, from Kurdish area. And Kurdish accent is more strong, I mean, stronger than Persian one. Mm. A lot of times when I teach, I mean, I taught Arabic and also Persian. Persian is really like a female language. You have not, you just let it go. It's, yeah, it's just, flows. You know, flows. But yeah. Arabic is, you know, everything Garo. comes from here. So yeah. Kurdish is something mm-hmm. between Persian and Arabic. It's yeah. not like Arabic strong and it's not like Persian. I mean, for the very beginning, it's, it's a good idea. But then later you can just, you know, it's more. So yeah, absolutely. A lot of, I mean, all of my friends, yeah. Even we had some Kurds at the university, they even couldn't be able to speak very well Persian. And we made a lot of fun of them, mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. you know. But so, I mean, yeah. So when you went to Turkey and northern Syria and so forth and so, in other words, if you, when you moved into more to the Kurmanji areas, mm-hmm. what was your affinity with the people? Did you feel it's like cousins or brothers? Um, was there anything that didn't fit perfectly and you had to adjust to and what what are some of those interesting experiences that you might have had 
Well, that's a really good question. But actually, so before I traveled to those area, I mean, I had a few friends even in Iran. So, you know, there is a small part of Iran in close to Urumia, Azerbaijan. They speak also Kurmanji. I had a few friends, so I had this kind of link with them from mm -hmm. the very beginning. I mean, when I traveled to Damascus, I had a few friends from Khamishlo, from Kurdish area in Syria. So before I traveled to those area, I had a this link between them. At the very beginning, so I just figured out that, you know, there is an accent, it's different a little bit, and they use some words. I know those words, but we don't use it, for example. Mm -hmm. And so at the very beginning, it was something of, I think it was something more than cousin, but less than brother, <laughs> for example. Yeah. I had a this small shot, for example, but it wasn't that much. You know what I mean? But then when I just moved to those area and I had a this coming or coming by them, I mean by the family, like I'm part of them. I yeah. traveled a lot to those area, Kormanji area, when I was in Syria also. So at the beginning, yeah, you're right, it was something between cousin and brother, but later, absolutely, for sure, I was like, yeah. Very I mean, comfortable. Yeah, very comfortable. Now, politics. Um, you know, in some parts of the world, you, you find a dominance of a specific political thought, meaning sometimes it's strong socialist, sometimes it's very anti-socialist, mm -hmm. uh, very capitalist, and so forth. Um, sometimes it's very much aligned with a religious, uh, you know, uh, focus, and other times in the same area others are not aligned, and so forth. So you get these interesting nuances. I'm familiar that the, the Kurds are quite diverse in, and they differ with each other and there's um, you know, lots of diversity there. Maybe expose us a bit to some of the uh, trends in, in, in politics in, in Kurdistan. Well actually it's really, it's, you know, it's a long history, you know, if you want to really understand everything what's going on right now in Kurdistan, it's, you should have at least, you know, long history, how Kurds they came and how was, you know, for example, the conflict between Ottoman Empire, Safavid Empire, and then after World War, and also Iranian Iraqi War, and after that, I mean, all those things you should, you should mm. pay attention to all those things yeah. to figure out what's going on. But mostly, I think there is something between Kurds. It's common between all Kurds. So it's a land and also flag, for example, and this, you know, tendency to our Kurdish identity. And so, of course, it's very strong between some people and it's less strong between another one. So, but I think the only thing, yeah, can be able really to make curse like 100% like, you know, one culture, one people. And even sometimes we, we, we don't need that one too. Eh? We, mm. I mean, we don't need to just make all of them like think like each other yeah. or one. No, absolutely, it's, it's, it's very old, you know idea. But I mean, so this kind of culture, land, you know, this kind of history, that's what Kurds, they all, for example, I have a small example like Nowruz, for example, a new year. So it's, it doesn't matter if you are in Iranian Kurdistan, in Rosh Halad, in Rosh Ava, in Esther, in Western part, in North, in South, everybody, for example, celebrated it. Mm -hmm. So some people, they are covered, they are Muslims, they are religious and some absolutely not they drink for example in their parties some people I mean but everybody celebrated it yeah. because it's no yeah. for example or disrespect for fire for example for dance for example if you just watch a few clips for example for Kurdish halparke or Kurdish dance so you can see sometimes oh this woman she has a cover for example or hijab for example but she does and it's you know it's that. <laughs> Yeah. But you cannot see such, such a thing probably between other people or between, for yeah. example, Iranian, I mean, in the media, that's so probably Iranian also on the mm -hmm. ground, they do a lot of things like, you know. So yeah. these things, yeah, I do believe that culture, language, and even this land and this background can make, I mean, that's the, the best thing yeah. for Kurdish identity. Now, the Kurdish experienced the genocide. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about that. Well, uh, there is... Also, this one, so um, a lot of people, they know about Anfal camping, so which Saddam Hussein did against Kurds and also Halabja. But if you go back to Shahnama, Shahnama is a, a people from Persian people. So we have in Shahnama, there is um, a poetry about a very uh, bad king called Zahak. 
So Haq was originally from Arab land, and he was king of Iranian area. And every day, so Iblis or Satan kissed his shoulder, and there was the two snakes came out from his shoulders. And every day, the, the king was ordering his crew to kill two people to feed those snakes. And those two peoples, poor peoples, was from Kurds, among the Kurds. And so, I have it, and right now I'm working on a book. Yesterday I talked a mm. little bit about it. So I think that was a first genocide against Kurds, but probably in a very limited. You know, How long ago was that? This one is belonging to, you know, Shahnama. It's written in something like four or five centuries. Centuries ago. A century. And yeah. no, I mean, it's something like 1,000 and um, 100 years ago. Oh, very long. And, yeah. yeah, and it's the first, you know, a peak in Persian culture. But the story also belonged to Iran before Islam. So it means this something like that happened before Islam in yeah. Indian or Achaemenian or the mm. area. Yeah. yeah. So that's the first thing against Kurds in Kurdish studies. You have to pay attention to that one. But the main, I mean, genocide against Kurds happened so during the Anfal campaign with Saddam Hussein did against Kurds, and also in Halabja, so it's really famous. And then from that one, the Kurds they just started going up. The huge part, something like six, seven thousand, came to the United States, and they mostly right now in Nashville, Tennessee. So they have something like Little Kurdistan, or they call it Little Kurdistan. And mm -hmm. Yeah, officially a lot of people they know. So have you visited there? Well, actually, so after this conference, uh, you know, right now I'm preparing these things for Kurdish books. I have a few, you know, I should may I should make a few audio and also video clips. So mm -hmm. I'm planning to go after this conference to Tennessee. It will be my first time, but so I have it. I already made a few friends there. So excellent. Yeah. And um, religion and in Kurdistan, tell me about the diversity of religion in in, in your community, Kurd, in the Kurdish community. Um, Kurdish, so most of course, I mean mostly majority of Kurds they they are Muslim, but so they are middle Muslims, so they are not really you know like extremists or something like that. And majority of them are also Sunni Muslims, and this one also makes sometimes you know they they will be religion close to Turkey and the Arab world. But by culture, they are more close to Iranian culture, and then again makes this kind of you know a conflict and something like mm -hmm. that between them. But uh, as you know, and also probably right now, a lot of things and media we have Izadi or Yazidi sometimes mm -hmm. people they call it yeah. Izadi culture, which is a, one of the, the the oldest religion in the world, belong to Adam and even before him. Mm -hmm. And also in gender studies, I mean. Is that it, it's a, one of those religions they respect women so much. It's, I mean, this is not really academic, but sometimes I have this one in my mind. If Abrahamic religion like Christianity, Islam, and you belong to Adam, is that it belongs to Eva? For, in my mind, I, I think yeah, something like that. So, interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a lot of times. So. They have something from Islam, something. No, from the Yazidi Yaz culture, is it uh, partially Kurdish or fully Kurdish? They are fully Kurdish, but we have also in Izadi part of them. They uh, they speak Arabic. I mean, so because they now those who speak Arabic are they Kurdish too, or is that a separate group? No, no, they are it's separate from Arab people, okay. but they are minority between Kurds. So yeah, majority of Izadi they are Kurds. So in Ottoman Empire, there was something like they called it Ferman, so which is a genocide against them. Something like that, according to their history, something like. 73, 74 genocides happened against them during the history, mostly in Ottoman Empire, and even sometimes by other Kurds, because they were, so according to a lot of sources, they are not Muslim. They worship for Satan or Iblis or, you know, whatever. And so that made them, you know, a lot of things happen against them in the history. So the last one, you know, it was about Ayes, so, yeah. and, you know, that's, I'm sure you know better than me, and there was a lot of things and media about this that you yeah. know, how they slice the women, is that it's women. Yeah, and also we have a Jew and also a Christian and also other, you know, religions like Alavi, Takei, Arasani. So absolutely, we have these, you know, all this diversity also in religion. That's, that's it. We are, again, at the beginning of the, our discussion. There is a small video, I mean, 
preparing for my book, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a really small a small clip in YouTube. That's really good one. So there's a few women and guys from different parts of Kurdistan, different languages, different, you know, and they speak in their dialectic and also in religion. And then, but mostly they say that I belong to Kurdistan, I respect this flag, I respect this culture. And so that's, again, so according to a lot of things, new I mean, things, the only thing right now is really for, can, can be a really great and good and also academic liberal identity for Kurdish is something like history, land, culture. We have a great culture, a great poetry, which no one knows anything about that part, you know what I mean? So, it, and, well, in our conversation yesterday, you mentioned poetry, and I could tell you really are passionate about Kurdish poetry. Um, so, are you interested to bring Kurdish poetry to the English world? Absolutely, that's one of my goals. You know, so right now I work on one and two books. So right now, and also at the same time, so I started out of translating some, you know, first from classic, Kurdish classic poetry, mostly from, from Malay Jazeri, which he was seven or 600 years ago. And mm -hmm. history also, you know, this has a, this kind of, you know, great poetry which will be you know, in this kind of poetry, which right now in the United States we know it as like Persian poetry, like Rumi, for example, like Khayyam, for example, it's mostly, so we have three parts of them. It's the first part is India, it's, or it's written in Persian, which recently a few people in the United States, they started translating that part also, so mm -hmm. I'm familiar with a few people, they made this one. Mm -hmm. And also this central part, like, you know, like Saadi, Hafez, Rumi, and also Khayyam, so which mm -hmm. is really famous here. But for the best part, that majority of Kurds, they did it, so there is nothing, we don't know a lot of, I mean, anything about that part. But it's great as those poetry from Rumi and Hafez and Saadi. I mean, if you need, sometimes it's, it, believe me, it's much better than a lot of part of that one. So of course, uh, one of my projects after this Kurdish book uh, to translate something from classic Kurdish to mostly from poetry because you know so right now a lot of people they working at novels and also stories, mm -hmm. short stories, contemporary things. So that uh, mostly I, I would like to start from classic things or bring that one to English. Absolutely, so one of my projects here. Fantastic. So, so um, tell us a bit about uh, Kurdish communities outside of Kurdistan. Well, there is a lot of Kurdish, you know, so according, I mean, during the Ottoman Empire, because a lot of things happened to Izadi, for example, so right now the majority of Izadi, they are outside of the Kurdistan, they, they live in Germany, for example. There is a lot of Kurds, I mean, in Sweden, in Sweden, and also in Norway, and a lot of places in the Europe, and even we have, you know, also part in uh, Armenia, and you know what, Kurds also during the, this conflict between you know uh, Turkey and also Kurds, the Turkish replaced a lot of Kurds from you know uh, south to, for example, to north or to Istanbul and Ankara. So right now we have something like four million Kurds. They live they live in Istanbul, for example. A few million in Izmir, and also there is a huge number in Ankara and other places. And even in Iran, if you are familiar with Iranian maps, so. Mm -hmm. We have a Kurdish, there is a community of Kurdish, and there are Kurmanji Kurdish close to Afghanistan, mm -hmm. I mean, in Khorasan, which is really, you know, how, how they get it there. And so, yeah, absolutely. And also in the United States right now, I mean, some, we have something like 12 or 30,000 Kurds, probably in mostly in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, there is, I mean, Kurds that around the world, everywhere, probably. And still, when I was also, the amazing thing, um, when I was in Lebanon and also Syria, Jordan, those parts, still they had those places in the name of Kurds, for example, Jabal al-Akra, the mountain of Kurds, for example. But you cannot see any Kurds there, so it means that there was, a, you know, Kurdish, you know, some minority or groups, and then later they lived there, and they married, or probably what happened. Just the name remained, there is nothing I mean from Kurds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of places like that in the Arab world, even you have in Egypt also. So you have this, I mean, Kurdish culture. We have a lot of famous people like Ahmad Shoukri, for example, one of the famous, he was Kurdish by, I mean, his mother. So, I mean, yeah, so there's a, a lot of Kurds outside of the Kurdistan as well. So when you go on the news uh, to read about 
your area. Do you go, is there dedicated Kurdish news websites or do you go mainly to Iranian and Turkish websites or how do you access your news uh, back home? Well, mostly, so it depended to the which part I want uh -huh. to focus on it, for example. So for Kurdish, I mean, Kurdistan in North of Iraq or uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, so there's a very good websites like, for example, or journals or TVs like Ruda and there's a lot of other things. And for Kurds in Iran also we have this part. But to understand what's going on in Iran, you should not also just be limited for Kurdish, you know, news websites and newspapers. You should read the other part as well. Of course, to, yeah. to get what's going on. So uh, what I read, I read Kurdish newspapers. I mean, it, in Turkey, in Syria, in Iraq, and Iran, and in the same time, I read news in Persian, in Turkish, and also in Arabic. And then I have this, and even sometimes, so of course, for sure, I check websites in English, like BBC, CNN, or things to see how how they represent Kurds, for example, yeah. which part. So I mean, I get my news like you know from this source. So you speak Farsi really well. Yes. You speak Arabic well. Absolutely. <laughs> You speak Turkish. Um, uh, Turkish. Yes. You speak English. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> yes, and um, and then the dialects, different dialects of Kurdish. Yes, I I speak. I mean, Sorani Kurdish, my native. I mean, my mother tongue. I'm here native in Kurmanji. I mean, I don't have any problem for writing, reading, reading mm -hmm. anything in Kurmanji. Is the same thing, or for you know. The only thing for Kurds probably there is Zaza, we call it Zaza, so I'm just kind of, you know, intermediate with Zaza. Tell or us about Zaza. Zaza, they are, you know, just kind of majority, I mean, minority between Kurds in Turkey. They have also specific, I mean, they share a lot of things with Kurds, a lot. And But there is something in their language is different, I mean, phonetically different from Kurmanji also. So... And why is it important to know that one? Well. Well, I have not learned that one too. So I am. Not, if I want to understand that part, also I should learn that yeah. one too. I mean, yeah. right now I can read it very well, and I can understand. But so for writing, I have the problem for that. Yeah. But it's not that much important for Turkish studies. But I. I but you mentioned something yesterday about uh, uh, one uh, language dialect that related to, I think it was religious text or, um, you know... Yes, absolutely. So, we have uh, this uh, Gorani or Kermanshahi. So, that one for Yarasani or Kake or Alavi. So, we call them yeah. Alavi, but it's a little bit different from what really they are. Uh, so, they have uh, two books, uh, Mus'haf Rash wa Tajalli ya These books, so written in that dialectics. So, if you want to, I mean, for me, it's really important to have access to the main source. I, I really respect translation. Mm -hmm. There is, you know, so there is. We don't have any other options for. Mm -hmm. I mean, but translation. So you know, a lot of times you, you lost a lot of things. You know, it's a, it's necessary part. I'm not against translation. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I have not also to have access to the main source. Yeah. So I read the, those books in the main uh, sources. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. This is You're rich welcome. and wonderful to hear yeah. about, you know, the diversity in your culture and also where on earth it has spread. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me and for this interview. Thank, thank you so you. much.